All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started tonight. Thank you all for being here tonight. We're so glad you took time out of your evening to come chat about big emotions and your children during distance learning. Um, we're gonna first introduce our panelists tonight, all of our elementary school counselors, and then we're just gonna talk through a few slides and a few things um, that might alleviate some stress for you and for your students. That's what our goal is tonight. Um, and then we'll have it open for question and answer. So if you haven't been on a webinar before, just a few logistics, uh, we are recording this so people can watch it later, but no participant audio or video is being recorded. You do have a chance to ask any questions in the question and answer box, and we will be saving those for the end. So go ahead and get oriented with how that looks on your screen. It's a little different than the classroom Zooms uh, that your children have been in. So we just wanna make sure you know that we are recording, but none of your audio or video is being recorded. So, all right, we're gonna go ahead and unmute ourselves and just introduce ourselves. I am Patty Hosel. I am the school counselor at Central Elementary and I am very excited to be here. I was grew up in Ferndale and went to all the schools um, and now I am back as a school counselor and I'm very happy to be serving the community in this way and have been really loving getting to know my Central Panther students and families so far, even virtually. We're doing it. We're meeting them and it's been going great. So um, Mrs. Squires, would you like to go next? Sure. Hi, I'm Megan Squires, and I'm the new school counselor at Skyline Elementary. Um, I am actually pretty new to this area and am thrilled to be living in such a, a beautiful place and to be um, part of this really awesome community at Skyline. I'm excited to get to know families and students better. Miss Wood, you want to go? Yeah. Hi, um, I'm Mrs. I'm Kristen Wood. I'm the counselor over at Custer Elementary. Uh, like Ms. Squires, I am also new to the area and I'm loving getting to know the community and meeting everyone and really getting to know our kids. Uh, I love seeing all the smiling faces and getting to know everyone. So thank you. Great. Next on my screen is Ms. Townsend. Hi everybody, I'm Michelle Townston. Um, I'm not from Ferndale. Oh, sorry, I'm at El, uh, Eagle Ridge Elementary. Um, but I'm not from Ferndale, but I have worked for the Ferndale School District for quite a few years now in a couple different roles. And I'm really excited to be here at Eagle Ridge Elementary and getting to know all of my kiddos and families. Ms. Dale, you're up. Yay! Hi everyone, my name is Mrs. Dale. I am the school counselor at Cascadia Elementary School. I've been at Cascadia, this is my fourth year. Technically last year is only there for two months because I was gone with a baby and Ms. Townsend was there for me. Now she's at Eagle Ridge and I'm back at Cascadia and it feels so good to be back with my staff, students and families. Awesome. Uh, we just have a great group of elementary counselors that are at each of your buildings and the district has made it a priority to have full-time counselors at all of our elementary schools and we're so grateful and we're really excited for what services we will be able to provide for you and your students this year. So one of those things is every Wednesday this group has been recording some lessons called Wednesday Wellness and those are a chance for us to pass along really important skills for right now. During this pandemic, during distance learning, there are just some things that are different and students and families, honestly, uh, just need a different way of coping. And so we really hope that your students are tuning in. And what I've been really suggesting is for families and grownups to watch it with their students so that they can encourage the practicing of these skills and their new learning and transfer it to other times where they may need it. So when anxiety spikes, maybe before bedtime or when frustration shows up during a Zoom meeting, um, you can remind them some of the skills they learned during a Wednesday wellness lesson that might help them get through that bump 
in the road. So let's consider tonight Wednesday wellness for you, for your for you as caregivers and as grown-ups in our children's lives. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. We're just going to talk through a few things and then we'll open it up for question and answer. And I'm going to primarily be um, hosting and emceeing tonight, but my friends that are the panelists, if you guys have anything to add, like please just unmute yourself and jump in because I would love to hear your insights as well. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So tonight's focus is just strategies for success. We want your students to feel successful, but we know that managing big emotions during this time is something that is coming up often. I know for me and my fellow counselors can raise their hands, we're on the phone a lot with a lot of you who are expressing that your students are showing different emotions and different behaviors than you have seen before. And the most important thing we wanna pass along to you is it's normal and it's okay. And a lot, a lot, a lot, if not all students are experiencing school in a much different way and having a lot of big emotions and bigger emotions than you're used to seeing. So that's what we wanna start off with is that we get it and it's normal and we're gonna talk through why their brain is creating some of those behaviors and big reactions. So the most important thing is that while students are home with you, that you are enough. So who you are right now to your kids matters more than what you're doing. So if you are seeing the elaborate learning stations or schedules or Pinterest setups uh, in your social media feeds, I promise you that that does not matter as much as how you are showing up in relationship with your child and showing them that you're present and that you care and that you are there to help them. Now, does that mean you have to have it all together all the time? No, you are human. You are going through emotions too. And actually modeling that and modeling coping skills for your child and with your child is actually one of the best things that you can do. So Thank you for all that you have been doing all the way back from our closure in March um, until now and just getting our students through this unprecedented time. And I know we're sick of hearing that phrase, but it is different. And we're all still learning, school counselors, teachers, and parents um, right alongside your students. So you are enough and thank you for all that you've been doing. This kind of goes along with it. Um, I don't know if you guys have ever heard this phrase, but to stop should in on yourself. So I should be doing this, or I should be setting up my child's learning this way. There really isn't a right way. So whatever feels right for your family and for your child's stress level, that's what you should be doing okay and you as the caregiver are really the expert in your child's capabilities so if there is an assignment or a day where they are working hard and it comes to you know 3 30 and they're still not done go ahead and be the expert and say we're done learning for the day i can speak for our teachers and our administrators that we don't want our elementary students working into the night if they've been working during the day we don't want any of our elementary students in tears from the stress level of doing their work at home. So you as the expert, you can create a flexible plan with your student. Um, I think right now what also is happening is we want our kids to succeed and we're watching them in their classroom, which we don't usually get to, right? So we want them to be participating and we want them to be completing all of their work and we want them to be, you know, getting the answers right, but that's not realistic. And that's not what happens in an elementary classroom. Elementary classrooms have students that don't get all their work done all the time. And teachers are asking them to stay and do a little tweak here or stay and finish, that's normal. But when we see it in a Zoom meeting of our first grader, it might create a little tension, right? And we might feel a little bit nervous, but that's all normal. So you get to be the expert and just remember that some of what you're seeing is not necessarily a problem 
or a negative aspect of your child as a student, it's a normal part of elementary school. This is where they're learning to do assignments and they're learning to turn things in. And so we get to watch their struggle and you also can allow the teacher to walk them through it without feeling all of that responsibility. So hopefully that just alleviates a little pressure from you um, to not feel like every box has to be ticked and checked off during the day. If it's causing any amount of stress, please communicate with your classroom teacher or us as counselors or the school principal, and we can figure out a right balance for your student. Because the most important thing is you and your child's relationship and something I should have put in here, their relationship with school. We want them to like school. <laughs> it's kind of an important um, message for their entire career through graduation. We want them to like school and enjoy being around their classmates and their teachers. Anything else to add, fellow counselors? I covered it all. I think you really covered it all. Like that has been many of my conversations with families has just been like, my kid is struggling to work at seven o'clock at night. I'm like, don't work at seven o'clock at night. So I think you really covered it all. Okay, good, good, good. And to just remember, I know I talked about this word, this really is new for everyone. So when I say uh, communicate back to your classroom teacher, remember that our classroom teachers are trying to provide opportunities to learn for our students and they are just getting to know your students who are new to them as well. So they might not know the gauge of too much or too little either because I also know that some parents are wanting more work. And then other parents are saying, this is too much work. So it's a little bit of a hard balance figuring out what each family and what each student wants. And this is a completely new experience that we're all really trying to figure out together and be flexible. And to be honest, there's no one right way to do it. And so every family, every student, every classroom teacher um, is gonna find a different way. And we really hope that you can feel some responsibility over that and communicate with us um, when a different plan is needed. All right, this is um, exciting. So tomorrow for our Wednesday wellness lesson, we are teaching your students about the hand brain. And so if you don't mind, we're going to give a short little neuroscience lesson. I wish I had learned this when I was in elementary school. It would have really helped some of my impulse control and conflict resolution in middle school. So we're teaching it early here at uh, Ferndale Elementary Schools. So the hand brain, we're teaching them that there is a feeling part, um, which is the limbic system, the amygdala, some really big words uh, for our students. And that is here, and that's what controls our fight or flight. It's what keeps us safe, and that's tucked in underneath the prefrontal cortex. I call it the thinking part. It's also known as the lid, okay? And when we feel a really strong emotion, kids love to make that sound. I have to do it once and then give everyone time to go. So um, off goes the lid when we're feeling a strong emotion, and when this part is in control, we might do something we regret, okay? And I'm sure that you have seen your child flip their lid, um, and that's when sometimes mean words get said or physical aggression, or maybe their assignment they've been working on um, might get damaged in some way. And this is what we call flipping their lid. So if you wanna use that language with your children, it's really great because then you're not necessarily saying, what's wrong, what's wrong? what happened, what happened, and when their lid is flipped, they can't really tell you. So instead you say, hey buddy, it looks like your lid is flipped, and you don't even need to know why. That's the magic of this. You don't need to know what happened. Oh man, if your lid is flipped, what can we do to get back to here? This is what I call cool, calm, and collected right here. So if we're here, what do we need to do to get back to here? And in the next couple of Wednesday wellness lessons, we're going to be teaching them coping skills like mindfulness and belly breathing and counting and all of the tools um, that will not only help in the classroom, but will also help at home as well. And I just want to say, I think it's coming up actually in a slide. Um, 
Oh yeah, perfect. Our lid flips faster right now because we're in a very stressful time. So sometimes I say the, the lid flips faster or the fuse gets shorter. So we all have a fuse and it's sometimes things just frustrate us and annoy us and chip away at the fuse. And during a time like right now when there is so much unpredictability and stress in the world and in our homes and with school, our window of tolerance is teeny tiny. So that lid is going to flip a little bit faster than usual. And kids are wired really differently. Some kiddos um, may have a longer fuse than others just naturally or biologically, but this really impacts all of us right now because we are all um, living in somewhat of a stressful time. I really appreciated reading, um, I forget who wrote it, um, but I can post it later, that children really have two of primary emotions and that's love and fear. And right now fear, because we're scanning for safety, has really increased our arousal state. So we're constantly, you guys probably know when you're at a grocery store and you hear someone cough, you actually pay attention to someone coughing, which I have never paid attention to anyone coughing before. <laughs> um, but now I pay attention because now I've been trained to think about a virus, right? And to think about my own safety and what's going on around me. I never had to do that before. And so now all of that is going into my wiring and making my window of tolerance a lot smaller. Not that all of our students are like in tune with all of that, but they know and they can feel that there is some stress and some threats to safety right now going on. So this is a really important part. I would love for you all to watch the Wednesday Wellness um, lesson about the flipping the lid and their hand brain tomorrow. It will really, really help um, give you some language to talk with your students when they're feeling strong emotions in your household. Anything to add? I'm going to keep throwing it out there if anyone has anything. <laughs> okay. And we will post um, this video and this PowerPoint if you wanted to take a few minutes and look into it further. All right. So there was kind of the why is my child showing big emotions? What's going on right now? Here is the what can I do? Okay. Um, I really, when I thought about all of the advice and strategies that I've been giving to parents all day, every day while I'm at work, it really comes down to these four things. And I actually tried to put them in order of importance in how big of an effect I think they will have on your students. So relationship, your relationship and the relationship you have with your child and their relationship with their family and with school is the most important thing. We want them to feel connected to you and we want them to feel connected to their classmates. So that's why those Zoom meetings are so important because our teachers are facilitating not only academic learning, but social emotional opportunities for them to connect with their classmates. That is the other reason we go to school. We go to school to grow our brains and to um, get knowledge poured into us and to get smarter, but we also go to be social and to be in a community with other people. So that is the most important. When you focus on that, think about how can I attach to my child today? What can I do? And it might be something that you haven't done since they were a baby. Maybe your fifth grade daughter maybe wants to have her hair brushed even though she hasn't asked for that in a few years. Or maybe it's a little extra cuddling, or maybe it is um, playing a board game that may be, feel a little, little kiddish. But right now, it's very predictable and it may feel very safe for your students. So those are some ideas to think about. The next one I wrote was responsibility. Kids may be feeling like they don't have any control over what's going on right now. I don't want to be in a Zoom meeting. Why can't I just go to school? I want to control something. So as much as we can give them choices between appropriate things and control is going to get you a lot of investment 
for their behavior. So could they choose what they want for dinner? Could they choose which pen they want to write with? Can they choose whether they do their math first or their reading first? So giving them some control over their academic work and maybe over some of their household responsibilities will really help them feel a little bit more in control of the situation. The next one is routine. So like I said, when things are unpredictable, that makes children feel fear. Well, actually it makes us all feel fear when we can't predict what's going to happen in the future. Um, some people like it more than others, but routines are really important. So trying to stay consistent with bedtimes, morning routines, um, meals, three meals a day, all of those things is really important. Um, and then we were looking at a flyer that I, I'll post with this as well, but even things like having the same thing for dinner, on a certain night. So tonight's Tuesday. So Taco Tuesday is a popular one or Spaghetti Sunday. Just a routine that your children can rely on during this time. Um, and that's something we're really focusing on with our teachers as well. And that's why those Zoom meetings are really important because it's a routine and it's predictable and we know we're going to show up and see our classmates and our teachers every morning at our set time. And the fourth one I think I kind of hit on, but that's regulation. So making sure that your students have coping skills when they are feeling a strong emotion. And one of their main teachers of those coping skills is you as the grown up in their life. So how can you model mindfulness with them or taking a deep breath? Specifically, it really makes my students and my own kids eyes get wide when they know that I am frustrated at them and I pause and take a really slow breath and say, I just need a minute to cope. I'm very frustrated with you. They're expecting me to yell or to do something and I just go, and then I think they know that's when it's really bad. But at least they are seeing that I'm modeling a coping skill when I'm really frustrated. So if that is something you may want to incorporate, um, you may want to think about that. And I just put our Wednesday wellness lessons. I was trying, I was hoping that I could put all five of our links, but I want to tell you that all of the school counselors have a link tree. It's kind of like an app or a landing page. I just put mine up here, but the cool thing is that all of ours look the same. So you can get the link on your child's Google Classroom or in a Skyward email probably. I think we've all sent it out or just email your school counselor and they can send it to you. And this is gonna be like the Grand Central Station of Resources. This is where our Wednesday wellness lessons are. This is where you can see old videos. You can request or your child can request to meet with us. We all have calming rooms that they can take a brain break and then our office hours. So it's kind of, we like to be really visible in the buildings. We're usually out at recess and in the cafeteria and in your child's classroom but we can't do that right now. So this is our way of being visible. So um, go ahead and make sure you bookmark that. You can save it to your desktop on your phone and then it's kind of like an app. So really cool way to use technology and make sure that you guys um, can access the school counselor whenever you need to. Patty, you can also um, find that on your, on the Ferndale Schools Facebook page. So all of our schools, oh not Facebook page, I mean, um, our website. So if you go to your school's website through the Ferndale School District website, you can find those under the counseling resources. Oh yes, perfect. I forgot about that. We're so savvy. Thanks, Nancy. Okay, next thing is we know that you guys are working so hard and you have added on an extra job to your existing job of raising your child. And so please, please, please make sure that you are taking care of yourself as much as you are pouring into your child um, during this time. So we've all heard that you cannot pour from empty cup. And so we need to take care of ourselves and fill ourselves up with gratitude, with some creativity, with making sure we're getting outside and some movement. Um, and I know that's not always possible every day with work schedules and other demands on our time, but as much as you can take some time for yourself 
even if it means that your kiddo is not completing X, Y, and Z at that time, it will be an investment that we really want you to make and take care of yourself for the health of your whole family. So um, this slide is just emphasizing that. And I don't know, you guys have probably seen so many images on social media, um, but this one's just these daily quarantine questions of just how to take care of yourself. And could you just do one of these things every single day? Um, there's actually also on our reopening website on Ferndale School District, um, there's a whole self-care section with some ideas for taking care of yourself um, and your kiddos. So very, very important. I don't want to skip over that part. And if you look like this lovely lady and it's too much and you need some help, um, I, I want you to reach out to your classroom teacher. I know I have talked about that and or your school counselor or your principal. We are kind of your trio of support staff that can help think about how to create success for your child, even if that looks different than other children in their class. We care about your child's mental and social and emotional health. We also want them to learn academics, but right now we want them to feel safe and we want them to feel connected. And so we can help create plans to make that happen for you and your child. Oh, this is what I was talking about with some of those anxiety reduction techniques and routines. So I will post this along with this video. Um, so if you wanted to do some further re reading, you could click on these links and get some ideas for routines, muscle relaxation, movement with your child, and other ideas. And I wanted to say with that, Patty, you can also email or reach out to us and we can go ahead and find some extra resources for you and just kind of work with you and offer up a, so much, so much support. We're ready. We're ready to help. Okay. Um, so before we get started with questions, I think it would be a good idea uh, we've been talking to a lot of parents. Um, maybe pick a question that's come up more than once and something that you have been saying to just uh, alleviate some of our families or our students even some of their stress. Um, if we can just go through and share one thing and I'll look in the Q&A to see if there are questions. Does anyone want to go first? I can go. Okay, Mrs. Dale, you're up. <laughs> So I, I have had quite a few parents email me and they, they kind of share everything that's going on in their home. Like I have to do this and this and this and my kid doesn't want to do math. And I, I feel I have a lot of families that are, that are overwhelmed with what's on their plate right now. And I really try to tell my families that it's okay to say this is too much. It's okay to say we can't do math today. And I know there's sometimes a lot of pressure on us. We feel like we have to have our kids getting certain grades. We have to have our kids achieving everything. There cannot be a missing assignment. That's not the case right now. And the case is that it's okay to have things missing. It's okay to not get everything done. And just to give yourself the permission to take care of yourself and put wellness first. So a lot of times we focus on getting the best everything um, the best grades, the best achievement, all that stuff. But that isn't as important right now. That's okay. So kind of step back and say, I'm going to take care of my family right now and I'm going to do what's best for our family unit. That's great advice. And sometimes if you don't do math today, you might be feeling up to doing two math assignments tomorrow and then it all comes out even. All right, Mrs. Squires, do you have something to share? Sure. Um, you know, I think um, just generally, I've been hearing um, just that people feel really stressed. I think it's kind of what, um, Nancy, what you were saying as well. Um, the stress level is high at home for everyone, not, maybe not just the kids, but the parents as well. There's a lot going on that we have to cope with on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and I know that self-care is like a, a big topic. Um, it's on social media and we talked about it um, last week, I guess, in our classes. Um, and I, I fully believe that that's important. But I think some of us think like self-care, my top five self-care things are going to be like 
going to the spa or going out to eat or, you know, these big things that take time. We're like, oh, I can't do those. So kind of roll our eyes. But um, I've been pushing micro moments and just um, really finding time, even if it's um, three minutes, five minutes to take a break in my day, um, get a cup of coffee and just be with the coffee, right? Taste the coffee, smell the coffee. Sometimes you might have to lock yourself in the bathroom to get away from the kids and enjoy your coffee. But, um, you know, if you can build in those little moments throughout your day, um, I think it does over time start to lower your own stress level and just help you to be there and to show up for your kids um, to help calm their stress level. So that's kind of one of the things that I'm trying to build into my day and also to put out there for people. The little things make a difference sometimes. And teaching them that that's okay too. That's one of the reasons we created our calming rooms is for those little brain breaks during the day just to de-stress and, and have a moment, a micro moment. I like that. <laughs> All right, Ms. Townsend, do you want to go? Yeah, something that I've been hearing a lot from parents is just like, you know, um, taking on the stress of scheduling and figuring out how to manage, you know, how do I manage my kids' Zoom meetings as well as appointments, as well as this and that, and building a schedule into your day that works. And it's not going to look like everybody else's. It's, you know, it's your own families. It's unique. Um, so working out what's going to work best for you and your families and really just putting that relationship first always is the most important. Like you talked about, Patty, um, building in those times to bond and those times to just de-stress and be together and not be together academically and giving your kids choices. Lots of talking about giving your kids choices and putting a little bit of the responsibility on them. Like, okay, you know, your Zoom meetings at nine or 9.30 and helping them kind of figure it out. And then they take pride and ownership in like, okay, this is what I do. I get on my Zoom meeting at this time. I click this link. Um, those are kind of the conversations I've been having with families. And, and I just want to say that we're doing it. We're doing it, Ferndale. Like it's really hard, but we're doing it. And we're here to help with whatever it is that you need help with at any time. That's great. It is pretty cool to see this young of students navigating technology. And I think their learning curve is actually quite a bit smaller than us as adults. <laughs> so it might be causing more stress for the adults than the actual students who were asking to use all of this technology because um, that is their world. So thanks for sharing. Miss Wood, would you like to go? Yeah. Um, I, when I've talked to parents and kiddos, some of the things that I've heard is that it, there, it feels like there's a lot of tension going on in the house for, on, kids not or kids struggling with zoom and learning and just having such heightened emotions and that's really tough on parents and that's what I have heard day in and day out and one of the things that I've been really focusing on with the with parents is as Patty you were saying is building that relationship in the times that aren't necessarily academic and so even if there's something as simple as spending an hour with your kiddo or even 20 minutes playing a game or just talking. That's something that I've really been focusing on is really building that relationship so that in times of need, our kiddos feel safe to talk to your talk to parents or caregivers as well as reach out if needed. Yeah. Great. And something I've been um, sharing with a lot of parents is that it's also okay for you as the caregiver to take a step back and to not check as much, right? And to not, um, you know, I don't want my child to fail. I think Nancy was talking about that. And I don't want them to fall behind. But if they do because of their choices, then that would happen in the regular classroom too. And I wouldn't be able to be right there holding their hand through it. So it's also okay to take a step back or maybe be out of the room during a Zoom and just see what happens um, in order to preserve the relationship and in order to preserve the stress level, right? So just trying to prioritize uh, which one is important at that time. Um, we had a good question and we've, we've, we've kind of hit on it a little bit, but 
what is a good routine for our elementary school students and how do we as parents help create that? Mrs. Dale, do you wanna start? Sure, yeah. So for my mind automatically goes is the routine needs to match what your family needs. And for me, I always think the kiddos know what's best. So I would like to ask my kiddo to sit down and together as a family come up with a routine. What kind of routine do you want? And the more choices you give your child, the more they're going to buy into that routine. So if you can really get your kiddo on board with um, what type of schedule works for you, what kind of work you're going to get done, even down to meal planning, if they're in that team with you and creating it with you, they're going to fall through with it um, a lot better. So I've been recommending to parents a lot to make a schedule and then sit, make stickies and sit down with your kiddo and schedule out the day together. And then maybe there's a way to make that into a weekly routine. Yeah. And I'll add on to that. If your schedule changes daily and you can't have a daily routine, that that's okay. And you can talk about it beforehand. So for example, my day looks different every day. So we have a morning meeting with our son who really needs to know the schedule so that he knows when I'll be home, when I'll be away, when I'll be home, but I'm in a meeting and you're not allowed in, you know, like he knows when all those are. And I've never had my son ask me so much, what meetings do you have today? <laughs> and, and I'm sure he is interested kind of, but mostly he wants to know what does the schedule look like for me today? So I think they naturally are wanting to know it. And even if your schedule looks different, because maybe you work one day and not the next, just giving them that lead time to talk through it or change the sticky notes or what have you is a really good idea. Any more thoughts on that? I, um, I like the idea of sticky notes or somehow trying to make it visuals. Um, we're all different in how we learn, but <clears throat> when I think about um, classroom and a teacher, I, I do like it when it's like on a whiteboard and I can see it, I can see what's coming up, even if that's gonna change on a daily basis, something where you can um, write it out or with pictures or whatever's gonna work. And maybe even the, your child's involved with that. It's kind of a way to just know what's, what's on the schedule for the day. Mm -hmm. I don't think I could have said it any better. I was gonna hit on having a visual schedule or having it move some way, if, even if it's just written on a whiteboard on the refrigerator or sticky notes, um, being able to like put it in blocks. Yeah, and I was, I also agree with that. And I know that some, it's really, really nice to be able to check kind of your, check a box. And when you complete that block of the day, that choice, that schedule, it's really rewarding for kids as well as you to say, we're done, yes. So having the opportunity to really like own the, own and like feel like you've done something is really helpful with, the, with creating those routines and those schedules. Those are great. Um, one of our participants said, we printed out and laminated the weekly schedule that our teacher gave and just put it in their son's school corner. Um, so that he always knows where he can look. So sometimes finding it in the Google Classroom, he, he may need a printed. And if you don't have a printer or a laminator, um, please reach out and we can help with those sorts of um, tricks and strategies. Even just getting from an office store or the, the you know, Walgreens, those slip covers, and you can just put a piece of paper in that and then it kind of instantly becomes like a dry erase board um, or you can put the schedule in it and that might be great for students to check off when they're done with certain things. So I think that's great. Um, next question, thinking about social life and friendships, how do I make sure that my child, especially the ones that gravitated more, that social butterfly type, um, how can we make sure that they are feeling connected to classmates during this time? Ms. Townsend, do you want to start? And then maybe Mrs. Wood? Yeah, um, I was going to say, I think it's really important to 
try your best to be, or your kiddo try their best to be at all those Zoom class meetings, because that's going to be where they're bonding with their teacher and they're bonding with their classmates and they're seeing kids of their own ages. And I know that the counselors will be holding like lunch bunch groups or small groups in the future. So that will be another way to connect with other students their age and other adults in the building. Um, so those are two really good ways right off the bat that come to my mind. One. Yeah, so I was also gonna kind of say that I've heard quite a bit of my, my student is really social and is really struggling right now with reaching out to others and that they reach out and it's just really hard to connect with others in this one we're away. So I was talking with a couple of families on the counselors might have uh, lunch bunches or small groups that are focused more on that academic or more on that social just kind of relaxing time. Um, another one that I like uh, for connection is online games, like even just things like Uno that you can, there's resources where you can play Uno with a friend online. So even just having that opportunity um, and then just reaching out to others. I think that's a big one is reaching out and connecting with friends, even if it's just by phone or a different kind of medium. It is such a fine line too, because right now we, it's safe to be social online, but we also don't want our kiddos to be on a screen all day long. So I know that that is a tension that a lot of parents are feeling too, like, is it okay for my son to play more Minecraft because he's playing with his friend or his cousin, but normally I don't let him play. And so it is just a tension. And I know the answer that you're all going to say is that it's up to you and your family and that you are the expert. And if you give them some extra screen time or video time and you see their behavior start to go down a path, have a conversation with them. And then maybe you take it away or you just find that sweet spot of how they can get their social needs met. Um, I know actually with distance learning, a lot of kiddos are getting a little bit better at email. So could you email funny pictures back and forth or jokes or talking, you know, as long as it's appropriate and, and you're checking it as a parent. But there are some ways um, through some of the technology that we have now gotten better at to have some of those connections as well. Or we can go old school and use this the phone as a phone. <laughs> and I'll have some families have their kiddos call a friend and just talk on the phone with a friend and that's made a huge difference. <laughs> kind of forget about the phone or even um, if, if your kiddos don't have like many friends that they can call, I'm sure there's a lot of family members, maybe even family members even talked to for years. You can set up um, phone, phone call nights, which might be kind of fun. Mm -hmm. Yeah, those are great ideas. Um, a participant said, Facebook now has a kids messenger app and it has games that kids can play together. So people and companies and sites are really pivoting to try to support some of um, the struggles that are going on right now. So um, I'm sure there's a ton of resources out there. All right. Well, is there anything else you guys would like to cover? We do want to have, while you're thinking about that, um, we would like to have another night or perhaps it'll be school specific because we know that we're starting to plan and think about students coming back into the building, some of you, um, for that hybrid model. And we want to support you as families and them coming back into the building. It will feel and look different. There will be some different rules. Um, but it's still going to be fun and it's still going to be school and we want everyone to feel really okay with that transition. So we may be providing some other supports, whether it's a webinar or a parent night um, or some email content to help bridge that transition because that is something that our school district is planning for and we wanna help that transition and make it as smooth as possible. Was there anything else you guys wanted to add before we go? You're doing enough. <laughs> you're doing enough as a parent or a guardian or a family member, or if you're a kiddo watching this, which I don't know why you'd be watching this, but <laughs> hi, 
You're doing enough. They love us. <laughs> <laughs> you're doing enough. You're you're doing an amazing job, and it always feels like you're not doing enough until you look back and see how much you've done. So, there you go. And just to add on to that, we're quarantined in our home, so we don't see what the next door neighbor is doing. So that we're kind of comparing ourselves to an elusive, perfect caregiver or maybe what someone's posting on their social media and you just never really know. So just be firm and confident in what you're providing to your own child. And I love that. I feel like we should make signs and send them home with parents and then give them the mission of telling three other parents, you're doing a good job today. <laughs> I think um, I would add on to that, that one of our strategies that we talk about in tomorrow's lesson is um, positive self-talk, which sounds a bit weird, but I catch myself with negative thoughts and my goal is to try and catch those and turn them around. And um, I really do think it makes a difference in how I feel about my day or my task at hand. If I can just reassure myself, this is hard, but I'm, I'm doing the best I can, right? And I'm, I'm going to get through this. Um, so I would encourage you as a parent to, to try that out, try to fit it in because it, I think it changes our perspective and we are all working so hard. So hang in there. Love that. I've also had quite a few parents want to reach out, but feel bad thinking that we're too busy. So please know we have time for you and that we do want to help you and we do want to support you and we're not, we will make time for you. So do not worry, please reach out for anything. We have time to support you and your family. Anything else? All right. Well, thank you all for being here. Thanks, counselors, um, for taking time away from your families tonight and supporting our Ferndale families. I love that. Um, and hopefully we'll be able to do some more connecting. So thanks, everyone, for being here. And good night. Bye. Thanks. Good night. Oh, a few things to add. I forgot. Make sure you're registered to vote. My second thing, make sure you fill out your free and reduced lunch application. Number three. You're Thanks awesome. For being here. You're <laughs> awesome. What'd you say, Miss Wood? You're awesome. <laughs> yes, you're awesome. You're enough. I remembered that I had to sneak those two things in. So there we go. All right. Good night, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.